San Diego's politicians were unusually busy this week lobbying each other about whether two tax measures should go on the November ballot. There's the city sales tax increase and there's the school parcel tax. And then the mayor vetoed another ballot measure to build a new city hall. With ballot measures, voters, not politicians, would make the hard choice whether or not to dig deeper into their pockets to support the city and the schools. But just deciding to put the measures on the ballot has its challenges. With me to explain the wheeling and dealing going on is Scott Lewis, Voice of San Diego.org CEO. So, Scott, as we tape the program, the San Diego City Council is meeting to determine whether to put the sales tax increase on the ballot. So give us a, a brief summary of what's happened since the council voted down the ballot measure on Monday and then last night's veto by the mayor. Well, first of all, this is the, the I've been following San Diego City politics for several years, and I have never seen a summer like this in, in the entire time. This is a scramble unlike anything else I've seen, and it has to do with the ballot deadline. In order to get things on the ballot, you need to have something approved by August 6th. And so this, this, uh, this chaotic frenzy to do that is, um, is really indicative of the desperation at City Hall. So since then, Donna Fry have sort of blocked the sales tax increase but said that in order for this to have a chance, you have to have people from all sides of the political spectrum to support it. You're not only going to have to have the labor and city council uh, uh, representatives of, of workers at, at City Hall support it, but you're going to need uh, business community support or the mayor's support. And so what she did was come up with a plan that says this sales tax would only go into effect or only stay in effect if um, certain reforms are made to employee compensation. In a nutshell, what are the key reforms? Well, for instance, one of them would outsource the Miramar landfill. Uh, another one would uh, make the employees pay exactly half of the pension costs that, uh, that they're uh, building up as they get closer to retirement. And so these, um, these triggers have to occur in order for the sales tax to go forward. It was, a, it was rather uh, brilliantly politically played for her to, um, to do this, and now we just heard um, that the mayor supports it, and um, this could be one of the most impressive uh, coalitions or, or compromises to come out of City Hall I've ever seen. Well, we, we spoke to Donna Fry earlier before all this happened about the challenges associated with getting voters to back the budget reform package. Why would you want to put something on the ballot that you thought had no chance of succeeding? That doesn't make a lot of sense. And I think even with the reforms, I think it's going to be very difficult to get voters to support this. I have, I have no illusions um, about this at all. And I, and I understand their concerns and I understand their frustrations. And I understand the fact that they feel um, distrustful. I get all that. But the reality is, is we have to do something. We're running out of time. We are reaching that critical mass. And I personally do not want to see any more city services cut. So why is this the time to address city problems that have been around for a decade? It's not. The time was five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago. The point is, is that now they've hit what they are all considering a major deadline with this ballot proposal. If, you, if recovery for the city includes some kind of uh, ballot measure, then what a lot of people are concluding is this is literally the last week before some serious city decay occurs to get something on the ballot. And so um, that's what the worry is. The mayor um, and his staff have said that 20 fire stations could get cut, 700 police officers. Now, maybe he's lying, but if, that, if he's being truthful at all, then a lot of people are scrambling. And I think the scramble, again, is indicative of the chaos and the worry about how desperate the city's situation is. But I find it amazing that at the same time, there were reports that the mayor asked the San Diego Unified School Board President, Richard Barrera, not to put a school parcel tax on the ballot right. with, with the city tax. How did Barrera respond to that? Well, uh, he, he buckled and said, sorry, uh, sir, I will uh, pull this off. And, um, you know, he, he later concluded that, look, uh, I didn't think this would pass anyway. And then he said something bizarre that the best hope for the San Diego City School District was for the state to balance a good budget. And it's like, that's like a tornado coming to your house and you're saying the best thing we can do is hope the state to fix its budget. I would, I would run away from that situation. Well, this is how San Diego School Board President Richard Barrera explains his reasoning. 
But, you know, when I uh, kind of put out there, you know, the notion that, um, you know, this might be something that it might be too hard to pass, I'm telling you, I got, you know, 100 emails from parents, phone calls, um, people saying, we know it's going to be hard, but it's a fight worth fighting for because we need to have great schools in San Diego. And so commitments from parents to, you know, jump in, volunteer, um, raise money, you know, make phone calls, knock on doors, put up yard signs. Um, and so I think we're going to have a very spirited campaign, and I think we're going to work hard to get the message out to all of San Diegans that our schools are in a crisis. So he, at first he said, uh, I want it on the ballot. Then he said, I don't want it on the ballot when the mayor went to him. And now he says, I want it on the ballot again. But the business community is already mobilizing to fight taxes on the ballot. You need a two-thirds vote for the parcel tax. What's, what's your best bet on whether it'll pass? Two-thirds is brutal. Look, let's take two, for example, two ballot measures that passed with two-thirds that worked. Transnet for transit uh, issues in San Diego got it and made it. But last year, a proposal to put something on the ballot to support fire protection didn't come close. And the reason is, is that you have to have everybody supporting it because 20% of the population will vote against it no matter what. And so you only have a small group uh, below that that can, that can make the difference for you. So he's going to have to somehow uh, bring conservatives on board to this proposal because if not, it won't have a chance. So I guess the overall question is, can the labor community and the business community come together on both of these proposals so that our schools are well funded and so that the city is well funded? They're going to have to um, not go all for nothing on their sides. They're going to have to say, you know, labor has to stop pushing through unilateral provisions. Uh, um, the other side has to see its future in schools and then try to see if they can bring labor along in some way. But the more that they're polarized, uh, the more that just the middle ground and progress suffers, I think. Well, Scott Lewis, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. For the latest news on the proposed city sales tax increase, you can go to our website, kpbs.org.